Okay, so for this first example, I'm going to take a couple extra steps that I don't typically do when I'm doing the problems on my paper, um, but I just don't want anyone to get confused. Uh, so I'm going to take it slow the first couple times and then I'll start kind of doing it a little bit more like I do it on my paper. All right, so same thing as with multiplying, we need to factor, okay? So that first numerator has a GCF of 2. We're left with 2x minus 3 when uh, we take out that GCF. I'm not going to combine them yet because I have to flip the second one over before I can combine them. So I'm going to deal with the first one first. Now, x minus 1 squared is in factored form, but for the sake of helping me see stuff better, I'm going to expand that and write it as x minus 1 times x minus 1. Okay? For right now, I'm going to keep it as division. I'm going to factor first, then I'll deal with the division thing. Uh, that first, or excuse me, the second numerator has a GCF of x, which leaves us with 2x minus 3. The second denominator is x plus 3 times x minus 1. Now, at this point, if I had anything in common in each rational expression, I could cancel, like if in the first one I had an x minus 1 in the top and the bottom, I could go ahead and cancel that out, but I don't. So uh, now I'm going to deal with the flipping part, okay? Everything is fully factored, so we keep the first part the same. We flip the second one over, and since it's multiplication, I'm going to go ahead and make it that one big, happy fraction family. What? Okay, this is the first, um, 3 times negative 1 gives me negative 3, positive 3 minus 1 is negative 2. Okay. Uh, I just put that line there to show myself this, is, this stuff was in the first one, this stuff was in the second one. You don't have to put that there. I just thought it might help the first few times that we do this. Yes. It shouldn't. I'm, I'm just trying to take it like one baby step at a time to start with. Yes. Yeah. And, that, and that's fine. That's fine. That's what I'm going to start doing eventually. But as long as you can keep it straight in your, in your mind, that's, that's fine. All right. So we've got 2x minus 3 in the numerator and in the denominator. We have 1x minus 1 in the top, two of them in the bottom, but we, have to, we can only cancel one for one. And that's it. So we are left with 2 times x plus 3 in the numerator. And that x needs to go first in front of the x minus 1. Okay. And that is it. Yes, you can multiply it out. I'd rather you just leave it in factor form. Don't risk making a mistake in multiplying it back out. Okay. Let's do another one. I'm going to do one more where I factor and then flip in two separate steps just to make sure nobody gets confused. And then in C, I'll start kind of picking up the pace. All right, so first numerator is y minus 3 times y plus 2. First denominator is y plus 3 times y plus 3. Just FYI, that is something that we call a perfect square trinomial. Not, uh, y squared is perfect square, 9 is perfect square. The 6 comes from uh, the sum of the perfect squares. The second numerator is the difference of perfect squares. So that is y plus 2 times y minus 2. And for some reason, this thought just popped into my head. Don't forget, you can always check your factoring by multiplying it back out. Okay? You can always just multiply back out, see if you get the original to check your factor. Okay, everything is fully factored. So now I'm going to start flipping. I'm going to throw my line in there again just for the sake of visual 
help. It's not actually separating anything. It's just showing me, hey, this was the first rational expression and this one was the second one. Uh, we've got y plus 2 in the numerator and the denominator. We have at least one y plus 3 in the numerator and in the denominator. So we are left with y minus 3 in the numerator and y plus 3 and y minus 2 in the denominator. It is very important that you're careful with your signs on these things, guys, because it can mess up the entire problem. If you get one little sign wrong, you'll either cancel something that you're not supposed to cancel, or you won't cancel something you're supposed to cancel. And it's all because you got a plus and a minus backwards. Okay. Ooh, let's look at one that just has variables. X plus Y over X cubed minus X squared divided by X squared minus Y squared over X squared minus X. This probably is not a good one to start doing my factoring and flipping in the same step. So I'm going to hold off on that one more time. All right, X plus Y. There is nothing to be factored there. So I'm just going to put parentheses around it for the sake of putting parentheses around it. First denominator, x cubed and x squared have x squared in common, so we are left with x minus 1. Always look for a GCF first, then go to your other types of factoring. Second numerator, x squared and y squared don't have anything in common other than the fact they're raised to the same exponent, but that is not the definition of having something in common in terms of a GCF. So that's the difference of perfect squares, x plus y times x minus y. The second denominator, GCF, this one does have a GCF, they have x in common. That leaves us with x minus 1. All right, so we've got x plus y from the first numerator. The second denominator moves to the numerator. For the sake of visualization, I'm going to write x squared as x times x. Hopefully you're getting used to just being able to cancel one of those x's. And then the second numerator moves to the denominator. So. We've got x plus y, numerator and denominator. We have an x in the numerator and the denominator. We've got x minus 1 in the numerator and the denominator. We canceled everything from the numerator, so we need to put a placeholder of 1. And we're left with x times x minus y in the denominator. One more. x squared minus 2x minus 63 over x plus 1 divided by 9 minus x over x squared minus x. All right, so I'm going to factor and flip in the same step. x minus 9 times x plus 7. I've been factoring for literally half of my life since I was in the 8th grade, which are what, 14 in 8th grade? Yeah. It must be nice. That would have taken me like 30 minutes. Well, I would hope not. Trust me. But it helps when you know your times tables really well, too. All right, so um, flipping and factoring at the same time, so the second denominator moves to the numerator. If you need to keep doing this in two steps, I am absolutely fine with that, okay? There is nothing wrong with doing that. I'm just saving space and time. X plus 1 is not factorable. 
we do need to factor out a negative 1 from that 9 minus x. And I know that because if I look at the other part of my problem, I see a factor very similar to that, x minus 9. So if I take that negative out and flip it around, then I can get x minus 9 down here as well. <clears throat> okay, so like I said, we wanted to get that to be x minus 9 so we could factor, or cancel, excuse me. And that's it. That is all we can do to this problem is cancel the x minus 9. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes that's it. All right, so in the numerator, put that x that was by itself, put that in front. And we're left with x plus 1 in the bottom. Don't forget that negative 1, but we don't leave negatives in the denominator, so I'm going to slide that up to the numerator. Okay, don't leave negative numbers like that in the denominator. Now, if that were negative 2, you can't move the 2. The 2's got to stay. Well, you can move the negative to the numerator. Okay? You can move the negative to the numerator, but if that were negative 2, the 2's got to stay in the bottom. There's so much left up there. Yeah. It looks very uneven, and yes, it looks like you didn't really do much, but sometimes that it is what it is. Okay. 